Welcome to this DQA repair video. This is uh, video number four in a series of uh, repair videos that we're preparing for the Dairy Queen system. Um, today we're going to replace a ballast on the drive through menu board, the LSI drive through menu board. I believe I have two ballasts out this morning. We'll find out when we take the uh, repair box uh, cover off. Um, but uh, tools that you're going to need to uh, conduct this repair is uh, an Allen wrench to open up your drive through menu board door. This is a 532nd Allen wrench, so in case you lose yours, these are available at any local hardware store. It's a 532nd. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. Again, that's the one with the star on the end. You're going to need your wire cutters. You're going to need number one wire nuts. Now, this is optional. I, as I explained in a previous video, I like to use wire nuts versus the uh, caps that LSI provides. And you're also going to need a, the menu board ballast from LSI. Uh, we're going to have the uh, instructions and uh, phone number and part number um, attached to this video below the video on the uh, website so we'll have all that contact information and part number on there for you now the first thing I took the uh, I took the menu panels out already as you can see on this side here we got three bulbs out and they're not burned out and one of the best ways to test is to take one of your working bulbs and switch it with a bulb that doesn't work if your working bulb doesn't work well then you know it's a ballast the I already switch this bulb and that bulb this morning and as you can see it, it, even though it was lighted here it wasn't lighted there so we have uh, we definitely have ballasts out here at least one maybe two now in order to find the correct ballast you're going to need to follow the um, metal conduit that comes off the um, the socket that's at issue and as you can see there's two there's three of them here is one for each con one for each uh, socket and you have to follow these metal conduits back to the box here. And this box is located the second door from the left on your menu board. And this is the box where all the ballasts reside in this board. And all it is is just a Phillips screwdriver um, to get these two screws out. This is a fairly light plastic box. And uh, just take that off for now. <clears throat> now, the ballasts that you can see where I got the orange wire nuts in here, I've already placed some of the ballasts in here. In this, in this, uh, in this menu board, there's three different ballasts, and uh, I've already replaced, I think, two of them. I think these two are the ones that are replaced in here. And the ballast, the ballast that's at issue is coming from these three metal conduits. If you follow it to the socket, it's th th all three of these here that are the ones at issue with those bulbs on the right hand side. And as you can see, they run, the wiring runs to the ballast that I haven't replaced yet. That's this ballast right here. And another telltale sign that the ballast is bad, you can see all this leakage out of here. And there's also black leakage coming from the top and from the bottom. So that's a telltale sign that your ballast, you see drippage in the plate here. That's, that's definitely a sign that your ballast is bad. Um, <clears throat> I have to apologize, I think I may have grabbed the wrong ballast, or I have to double check to make sure <laughs> that I grabbed my, my light bulb ballast out of the store. But uh, I will uh, we'll pause the video and I'll go grab the right ballast. I apologize for grabbing the wrong ballast, but uh, this is for a light ballast. And uh, I have one of these inside and we'll, we'll get that in there, so pause it. Alright, and we're back. Um, I went and gotten a proper <laughs> menu board ballast um, for the uh, LSI menu board. And uh, I also went to get a flathead screwdriver, which I didn't quite mention. There's uh, flathead screws to hold the ballast in here. And I also took the liberty of turning the power off um, to the drive through menu board before we get into, into this issue in depth too far. But uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the, the bolts that hold the uh, suspect ballast in and try and get that out of there. And as you can see, sometimes those bolts are uh, in pretty uh, pretty bad shape in terms of uh, you know rust or buildup or uh, things that uh, cause the bolt not to come out. You may need to have some WD-40 ready also and spray those bolts, but uh, please spray it when the board isn't on because you never know if there's like some sort of stray surge or something like that. Okay, we're going to leave that bolt down there, and uh, as you can see, this uh, 
black gunk here also cause the ballast to stick to the uh, stick to the plate there which isn't good and since we just loosened the top one up we're just gonna pull the ballast out like this all right and we're gonna loosen this bolt up a little bit so we can slide the new ballast in reasonably without a lot of issues but I think we're just gonna try and slide it in as is since <clears throat> it's a lot more hassle to pull that one out than it's worth now now you got to be careful if your money board was on this ballast is going to be extremely hot and uh, so be careful you don't burn yourself but what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our wire cutter then you're gonna slice the wires in several places first slice it as close as you can to the white and black wire and then slice it as uh, close as you can to the all four red wires here and then you're gonna slice the yellow wire out and generally good idea to take it one at a time and not dent your front of your, front of your menu board doing it. All right, so we're gonna get rid of that ballast. Now remember, those ballasts can be recycled. Um, you can get anywhere from uh, um, 15 to 30 cents a pound at your local scrapyard, depending upon what they're paying. And then what we're gonna do is the ends that we cut off, we're gonna take the yellow wire, we're gonna strip them clean and get some clean ends so we can put our new ballast in. And uh, generally on a wire cutter, on mine, that's uh, setting number one that makes for perfect uh, wire stripping on these wires. Now, I have a small wire cutter, so, you know, there's some big models out there that also work well for this task. Now, the, the big thing with uh, this menu board, I was told that these ballasts do have some guarantee as you can see the two new ones that I put in they're probably two or three years old and I haven't had much issue with them um, this is the last of my old ballast so I'm hopeful that this will be the last of my uh, ballast fun on the drive through menu board uh, but just so you know since the last video I've already uh, had to replace two more indoor menu, menu board ballasts which they just seem to be dropping like flies lately um, but LSI does have a program through Pepsi I guess and I just redeemed $200 worth of my money um, for ballast as part of your uh, beverage contract. And uh, I did get ballast on the last, uh, this ballast was bought with that $200 worth of Pepsi money. So if you have money available, um, check with, uh, check with uh, IDQ, uh, IDQ's Pepsi program and uh, they may have uh, they may have some money available that you can redeem for your store. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slide this ballast in. Now we're going to slide it into the bolt that we can't get out and then we're going to put the bottom bolt back in but you need to have the red and yellow wiring facing towards the top and the black and white wiring facing towards the bottom. That's just because the power wiring is down here. If you flipped it around there's just if you flipped it around there's just no way you're going to get the power wires to hook up. So make sure the red and white the red and yellow wiring is on top. And what we're gonna do is clear the way here, push that up and under, and we're gonna put this bolt back in. And hopefully it will go in with little to no problem. There we go, you just gotta pop it in underneath there. And we're gonna get that in there, and then we're gonna take our flathead screwdriver and tighten that up. Right, there we go we have that in tight then what we're going to do is we're going to take our wire nuts and uh, tighten up all these bolts or tighten up all these wires and uh, my wire nut box is uh, trying to get away from me today I'm um, in this little bit of a breeze out here this morning all right now what you want to do is there's no big secret it's you match color coded wire to color coded wire you take the black that you cut off on the menu board and you take the black wire um, from the ballast that you just installed and you just take the wire nut and just tighten them up push it down and twist and it's it's just that easy the now 
LSI does have these clips on here. You can use these clips to flip them in and out, but I think they're a pain in the butt to deal with. I always tend to scratch up my hand or bang up my hand when I use them, so I'm not a big fan of them. So I will uh, generally opt for wire nuts instead and just strip out new connections. Now, what you want to do, the red and yellow wiring on the ballast, you want to stretch this out. Now remember, this stuff is coming from the top, so it's very easy. You don't, you shouldn't be too hard to not confuse or cross connect here, since you got everything on top here from the ballast. So these are the ballast ends, and then all the wiring down here on the bottom is from the menu board. Now it's important which four red to which four red is not a big deal. It's just don't cross or connect the menu board to the menu board or the ballast to the ballast. You want to make sure these four red go to those four red and don't you know cross connect them like this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take care of the yellow one since that's the easiest and uh, there's really no uh, challenge on uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to cross connect the wires to, its, to the yellow ones themselves. So we're going to connect these up <clears throat> and then we're going to connect the red ones up and uh, these are the four that are coming from the ballast and these are the four from the menu board. So what I'm going to do is hold them in my hand here and I'll do one at a time. You know, the other way to do it is just bunch them up like this. That way you won't cross connect them. So then you know that that bunch is uh, coming from the menu board. And uh, this bunch here that's I don't have all twisted up is coming from the ballast. So that way you won't cross connect them to each other. But you got to make sure that each of these that each of these red wires in the menu board is connected to the ballast. And uh, again, cross connection will blow out your menu board and that's a bad thing to have. Um, while I'm doing this, one of the other things I wanted to discuss is this uh, this Dairy Queen Ellipse sign up here. That always has a special bulb in it and uh, it's a high output bulb that you can never really find. And I've been discovering a lot of electric suppliers um, only sell that bulb in 20 packs or 25 packs. Well, no Dairy Queen's going to need $300 worth of, of those bulbs because they only go out every two or three years. And there's an indoor menu board ballast in that sign up there. What I did was is I stripped out the ballast and we put a connection of uh, uh, Christmas lights in there to light up that thing and it, we just basically we took the ballast entirely out of there and that way we don't have the problem finding that bar, bulb and because generally you can only get that bulb from a sign manufacturer and then you got to pay them for a service call and it's just a pain about to find that bulb so if you're running that issue I would just take that entire ballast out of there and just string up some lights that you can get at a local hardware store and put it behind the ballast and uh, that gets that issue fixed really quick in my case the ballast was out as well as the bulb up there, so it was a win-win just to, you know, get a string of lights to put in there. All right, now we have this ballast all strung up, and what we're going to do, you need to shove all this wiring back in. You know, it doesn't have to be beautiful, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just don't knock any of the wire nuts off. You know, this, this, these, all this wiring pretty much sponges in. It's not, you know, it's not something that uh, is going to be a huge deal in the aggregate, but... Just make sure you don't knock any wire nuts off doing this or you know doing any of that and uh, it, it should be just fine. Now we're gonna take the uh, we're gonna take the panel and try and get this in. Just make sure you don't pinch any wires you know on the uh, frame here. That's that's the huge deal is you don't want to pinch any wires because generally it'll be rubbing against the metal frame and if you have any sort of vibration on your equipment it'll sever through an arc and uh, that can that can also be a bad situation in terms of uh, uh, causing fires, that kind of thing. So what we're going to do is just going to put these uh, Phillips back in, and got one on top and then the one on the bottom. And we're going to gently make sure everything's in here. There we go. Got it that time. Now, you don't have to like super tighten this panel down. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't need it actually it's probably best not to super tighten it because you know, if you leave it a little bit loose, just enough to where the panel is on, um, that's probably sufficient cuz 
you do want these ballasts to get at least a little ventilation or a little more than what the air holes allow. In fact, I'm just going to leave this panel off right here to be honest. Well, I'm not going to leave the panel off, but the you see they got ventilation holes in here. These ballasts, a lot of their problem is, is that they melt and they get too much heat. And of course, that's not so much a problem in the wintertime in Wisconsin, but can be a problem in the summertime. And uh, generally, you don't want to super tighten it that it doesn't get any air, but at the same time, you want to have a proper cover on it, you know, at least uh, that it holds. So it's, I don't think it's a big deal that it, if it sticks out a little, let it get some air. I think that in the aggregate, you'll be better off. All right, now I'm going to leave my cameraman to put the, uh, put the camera on the menu board. I'm going to go inside and flip it on and see if we see if the balls on the right hand side light up. As you can see, the three bulbs on this side did light up, so that means it works. And uh, it also lit up the one bulb that was in there, that was in here on this side. These three bulbs and this bulb right here, you skip the bulb, was on that ballast. And that bulb's been a problem for a while. And now all of a sudden, these other three bulbs went out on me now. So that forced me to fix that ballast. So now they all work. Um, so this is... Uh, this is a, a generally an easy repair if you have the right tools. And basically what we're going to do now is we're just going to put all the panels back in and we're going to be ready to go. It's uh, we're just in front of lunch hour and uh, hopefully uh, this will take care of the problem long term. But uh, if you have any other uh, suggestions for DQOA repair videos, um, please uh, email DQOA at DQOA-DQOC.com. Um, in the next video, I'm hopeful in a week or two, we're going to do rooftop maintenance. Uh, we're in Wisconsin in June and the cottonwood's been flying like snow and uh, we are going to uh, go through all the rooftop equipment and show you where all the cottonwood can hide in secret. Thank you very much.